Hello once again internets. Today's magical electrical lantern box show is about how Tiny GP calculates fitness. There are three questions relevant to fitness we'll want to answer. Just how is it that one program is accounted as better than another? And what does that mean for a program mating with other programs? And how does fitness affect the odds for being replaced by newly created programs? We'll spend our time in this presentation on the first question. Well, to get started, let's hear from Professor Poli himself on the matter of fitness. He writes, the fitness function is minus the sum of the absolute difference between the actual program output and the desired output for each fitness case. Tiny GP maximizes it. Uh, that's sort of dense, Doc. Let's break it down a bit. Another quote. We strongly encourage doing GP as well as reading about it. The dynamics of evolutionary algorithms are complex and the experience of tracing through runs is invaluable. Good suggestion, Doc. Hey, and it looks like Doc dropped us a file on his way out. Let's see if we can use it to figure out how fitness works. First off, a quick review of the header is in order. Again, moving from right to left. There are four fitness cases. We can verify that by counting the rows just below the header. The random constants we'll encounter within the programs will be between 6 and 8. And there will be exactly three of those provided to us to use in the primitive set. And we'll have one variable, a very tiny problem set, and exactly what we'll need to trace through what's happening with fitness. Let's imagine that tiny GP gets started and an initial population gets loaded with several thousand programs. We then reach in there and pluck out one, which we'll express here as a tree. Note that our arbitrarily chosen program has terminals with constants within the defined minimum and maximum range as stipulated by the problem dat file. Also notice those numbers are two of the three available constants in a holding array of type double within TinyGP. We should note here that the holding array will have many additional numbers all within the defined range, but only the first three available, generally at the front of the array, are ever used, since that is what the problem dat header stipulated. Since we have a total of four input fields, we must run each input field value through our x variable. All the constants have already been set into this program and will not change but the x value will change. Indeed, it will change a total of four times. So the initial fitness evaluation will plug a one in for the value of x. We see the small subtree portion of the program yields a negative one for its values under the function of subtraction. Then that result is fed into the higher scoping tree where the root node holds the function of addition. The negative one results added to the x value of one yields an overall value of zero. The next value to be fed into the x variable will be two, then three, and finally four. Now it's time to track the rest of the input field values into the program. We can now conceive of different stages where two, three, and four are fed into x, and we get results for each stage. Here we have all four stages of the program showing the overall subsequent evaluations for each. So we can now also observe the differences between the target values, which recall are in the second column of our problem dat file. The question for each program tree is, how far is this stage's result from the target stage? Well, let's take a look. The difference between the first stage result and the target is 10, while the difference between the second stage result and the target is much greater, in that case, 19. The next two result stage differences are 28 and 37, respectively. If we recall a portion of what Professor Poli says, he spoke of the, quote, sum of the absolute difference as part of his definition of fitness. Here, for this particular program, we see how that's figured and comes out to 94. Consider a slightly different problem dat file with different constants. Further, suppose a few generations pass and a few new child programs have been evolved from parents of the just past generation they would have been placed in the population. Let us grab one of those from the population and check its fitness. Here we happen to have the same kind of tree structure as last time, but we now have different constant values in the terminals. 
During evolution and production of new programs, the differences between the results and the targets shrinks. Thus, the sum of the absolute difference will tend toward zero. Again, we see that at each state, the x values drawn from the problem dat file have been fed to each stage of the program. Notice that this program has an absolute sum of difference value of 70, which is closer to zero than our last tree, which was 94. Well, looks like Professor Polich rolled back in with his definition of fitness. But now we're in a good position to see what he means. Since TinyGP maximizes fitness, we have to add a minus sign before any sum of absolute difference. Doing so allows a negative fitness value to move towards zero, so a fitness of negative 70 is greater, as in closer to zero, than a fitness of 94. Indeed, if we look at Doc's source code, at the method where fitness is calculated, that's exactly what we see. A loop runs through all the fitness cases, each x variable, we only stipulated one in this problem dat file, is loaded with the proper input field, and then the absolute difference between the result of each tree and each target value is calculated. After that loop's complete, the method returns a negative fitness value in the fit variable. Well, that completes answering the first of our three questions, which were relevant to fitness. In our next video, we'll address the final two questions, which are really about how tournament selection works in TinyGP.